Greetings and welcome back to Switch to Lisa. Oh, the kitty just got back from vacation right this second. Here he is. Look at that. Hi, buddy. How are you? Was your vacation good? Did you have a good good time at Tahiti? <laughs> there he is. All right, guys. You guys want to see the kitty? There's the kitty for you. All right. And uh, I better turn that off. <laughs> it's going to show up. Some desktop audio showed up there. Oh, yeah. He's a big kitty. Um, all right. So we are going to be here talking to our panelist guys. And uh, we got on Dan and Vince, and we might have some more folks on here um, on here soon as well. I sent the link out to everybody, so we might see uh, Ben or Ben or Quint or Brian show up. Just kind of depends. Um, I got my link like within four minutes of now. Oh, really? Yeah, I sent them all out. So um, the links are sent out to um, Patreon and Think Life Media, and I sent them out if you're on my email list as well. So, greetings, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about fun Linux projects. So, before we do that, let's see who's on. Ricky's on. Hello there, Ricky. How you doing? CJ, or Thomas Holt. How's it going? Yeah, this is CJ. Which, by the way, his name now, CJ, stands for Claymore Jr. And to explain, he really likes sitting on the steps on the way downtown, downstairs. And so you know, it's the only place that's carpeted in the house. So he sits there, he snuzzles around the steps. And so if you're not careful going down the steps, you are going to step on a Claymore kitty. And so his <laughs> name is now Claymore Jr. And so that's what C stands for now, Claymore Jr. Uh, but yes, he's doing well. Patrick Sullivan, hello there. Sleepy's here with us as well on the live panel. Uh, Stephen Smith, Hi. greetings. The kitty is having fun. He just rolled back in from Tahiti, I'm telling you. Uh, Jonah, uh, Joa Oliver, Oliver, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name, my, my apologies, greetings, hello, uh, Lepom, 123, hi, 123, greetings, Mitchell Morrison, greetings, how is Phoenix doing, I bet you're a little bit warmer than we are down here, Kitty's getting fat, yeah, he is, hello, Mark, and Fortnite Gamer 69 what's up, yo? And Linux Dabbler, are you dabbling in Linux, so are the rest of us, so how you guys doing this week? Hello. Right. I'm kind of off on medical. Whoa! There went the camera. <laughs> Whoa. Well, let me go get the camera back, guys. <laughs> I think the kitty needs a leash. Crazy kitty, crazy kitty. He's just like, yeah, yo, camera's going down. All right, I think we're back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. All right, well, anyway, how's it going, Dan? <laughs> um, it's going okay, I guess. All right, that's okay. Is good enough at times. Okay, is good enough. That's how I've I been off on medical for a couple of weeks. Ooh, that's not good. I hope it's not. Yeah. Too serious. Mm -hmm. Right, I have some uh, health issues. Yeah. Well, sorry to hear that. Thank man. Goodness, man. Yeah. How uh, you doing, Vince? Uh, very well. It's a beautiful 26C here. Oh, shush, shush. A little overcast, but pleasant. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A little overcast. It's uh, it's pushing 30 Fahrenheit here. I mean. Yeah, that's about what I got here. Is about a nice, cool 28. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Kid One Fiend, you hope you're jumping on there, man. I sent you the link. Hopefully, you got it. Uh, was that a cat related production problem? Yes, that was a cat related <laughs> production problem. That's why in the old place, I actually had the camera actually on the wall so the cat couldn't mess around with it. But here, um, since I have two office settings, one this way for the camera here and the other one for the camera going on the green screen. Um, you know, the cat now has the ability to knock the camera off the desk again. So, um, I can vouch for the, uh, durability of Logitech cameras. That is, uh, the cat has knocked them off the desk a few times. They seem to work. I've only had one, uh, I had one C615 that died out on me, but yeah. So today we're going to be talking about fun Linux projects. So what type of fun Linux projects are you guys into? Well, I've been using the Steam Proton um, application to actually run some games, and I've been kind of bored, so 
you know, rather than sitting in front of the TV, I've been trying to keep my mind going with some games. Cool. Very good. And um, I haven't done much with music lately. I pretty much got my music all cleaned up in the way I like mm -hmm. to listen to it. And cool. as far as, you know, the MP3s and all that goes, um, okay. record collections doing good. I try and play with that at least once or twice a day. Mm -hmm. cool. um, Very good. I haven't done any graphics work, but um, um, <laughs> I've been just enjoying using my Linux for whatever it'll do. Cool. Very good. All right, Vince. I'm using... Oh, oh no, okay. Keep going. Keep going if you could. Um, I'm on the Ubuntu 18.04 Mate version. It seems to be the most stable one that I've found yet. Very cool. Very cool. All right, Vince, what do you got for fun Linux projects? I actually did some prep. I've got a list. Some um, list. So, yeah, I know. Um, my, 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 most, my most recent little toy that I got was an IC dock, which I've got to say is awesome. Uh, I but, think I have one over here. Let me double check on that so people can see it. Go yeah. ahead. Keep talking about that. Yeah, but, but fun fact, um, before you go out and buy an IC dock, just double check how many free SATA ports you have in your motherboard. Because, I mean, I knew what I was getting into. Um, I, I've, I've got a cheap motherboard on my desktop, so I've got uh, six SATA ports. Uh, but I already have uh, two internal spinning drives for data storage, and I have a DVD drive. So that only left me with three uh, free SATA ports, but that's okay. Um, and that's great because now I can keep my Windows boot. I can, I've got uh, a Linux Mint boot, which I'm trying to use more full time now, and a testing uh, boot as well. And what I noticed recently was that uh, with SSDs now, they've come down so much in price. Uh, like they're basically equivalent or maybe even cheaper uh, gig for gig uh, as a USB 3 thumb drives. And so I thought with, with the massive speed improvements you get over USBs, I was just going to get so SSDs to test stuff on. Just, mm -hmm. you know, cheap but cheap, cheaper but still name brand ones. Um, so I, I actually want to try and learn some Arch. Uh, call me crazy, but I, I'll see how I go with that. Because I, I don't know, I, I get the impression that Arch may be slightly more efficient, uh, slightly faster maybe, because it's just the leaner sort of distros. Uh, but we'll see. I'll let you know how it goes. I've, I've had a few difficulties so far, but anyway. Yeah. Um, the next thing I've got on my list is uh, I've, for a while now, I've had a, a in, one of those little Intel NUC, uh, little mini PCs running as my home theater. Uh, but it was, a, it was a Pentium processor, so it was actually struggling under Windows, which I had it, Windows 10, which I had it on initially. So uh, recently I've just chucked uh, Ubuntu and Kodi on it, and it's working like a dream with four gigs of RAM. It's mm -hmm. So much better now. Uh, one of the, the bigger things I want to eventually maybe do is maybe build up a, a beefy home server. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a, I mean, I've got a, a lot of experience uh, through, through work with uh, Windows servers. Uh, what we do there is we we have every user on their desk have just a, a, a either a dumb sort of computer, or a low spec computer, or a thin client, and they remote their desktop into the into their desktop into the, the Windows server. And I thought that that actually might be a good setup to have at home, especially with, with kids who are starting to get, you know, into computers, starting to get into technology, being able to control what they what they mm -hmm. see uh, and control uh, what they do, but also just ease of management, ease of, you know, I don't have to go around and, and update every single machine that's going to be in the house. Yeah. Uh, I don't have to back up every single machine that's going to be in the house. But, I mean, there's not an easy Linux solution to that. Um, I recently stumbled on a, a, a package called X2Go, and that sounds promising. I haven't tested it out yet. Um, and what it is, it, it provides a remote desktop. Um, it has a, a server side and a client side package. Uh, so I'm, I might try that out uh, and see how that goes. Uh, I know that there are other ones, like there are TeamViewer and there's um, uh, VNC, but in my experience with using them, they've, they've always been a bit laggy. So. Uh, I'm going to see how this other one goes. I found that that actually Microsoft's RDP uh, protocol actually works best mm -hmm. uh, in a lot of circumstances. Okay. 
Um, um, uh, Calculate yeah. actually is built for that kind of enter, uh, enterprise deployment as well. So look into Calculate. Yeah, but I saw your stream on Calculate and that's put me off. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, I got it working. I got it working. It's, it's not functioning. Um, it took five. Yeah. <laughs> but I think there was... Uh, what did I finally do to get it working? There was something weird and specific that may have been related to a virtual box. So if you have an IC doc and some SSDs, give it a try on that okay. rather okay. than just saying, oh, because, the, and, and I can't remember, I did describe in the video exactly what I ended up doing. Oh, you know what it was? It, it installed just fine. It was running the updates was the problem. So you had to install it, then you had yeah. to run the updates, and then you could go ahead and install anything that you needed. Actually, uh, utilizing I think the that, auto install. Um, that's but, funny because I've been I've been testing Manjaro and I had the absolute reverse problem. So mm -hmm. Manjaro was working really well on it in a virtual box when I was testing it. But when I went to install it on the SSD, I had to do it about four or five times as well because the updates would it would just crash the whole thing. The thing would just shut down. It was really mm -hmm. weird. I've had nothing but trouble with Manjaro when it comes yep. to putting it on bare metal. I I wanted to love Manjaro, it just wouldn't love me back. I yeah, mean, I had it it. four times and the updates yeah. killed it every time. Yeah, I think uh, it's, sure. I might have to know the hardware, but I finally got it working. But I think you've got to update the GNOME keyring first or something like that first before it will up, then update the rest of the initial updates. Hmm. We're going uh, to update sorry. Arch right now. We're going to see what happens. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, eventually, I also want to build myself a, a little VPN thing as well. Like I've seen it in your old video, older videos with like a Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, just so that once I, maybe once I've got the server set up, I can then remote into my home PC from wherever I am. Yeah, uh, that's, to more secure that's and have my a graphic, idea. Yep. Have a graphical uh, interface rather than just SSH. I've not tried that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes you just need a graphical interface. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I pretty much use it just to connect in to access my network shares is what I do with mine. So if I'm going to be yeah. traveling out of the office for you know more than a day or two, I turn on yeah. all my security cameras because my security cameras cannot be viewed from outside the network. You have to be in the network. And then I VPN. Then when I'm VPN in, then I can see the security cameras. I can access my network shares and stream things from my office. That's, that's Yeah, a, so it's a lot uh, better than – it's a lot more secure than opening ports in your router, just in case correct. anyone doesn't know. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep, absolutely. And then, then the only one port's open in the router, and that's the VPN. And good luck with my uh, four kilobit encryption key. <laughs> now, if you're in a situation where you have a motherboard that has limited SATA ports, this thing right here is called a RAID controller, and it slips in an additional um, um, PCI slot on your motherboard. This one will add two additional hard drives, but I have one that'll do five. Nice. But there's a downside to using one of these things. Um, when you start up your computer, the BIOS goes and detects it, and then the machine wants to start up a second time to include it. So it's kind of, it does a double boot when you boot your machine up cold. Hmm, interesting. I find because it crazy the, I need to boot mine up a couple of times to get it up and running. Well, it does it all by itself. You'll see the BIOS screen, and it'll go, the little uh, speaker will go tweet, you know, and then all of a sudden the computer will just go and shut down and restart, mm -hmm. and then it'll boot, boot up completely. It's yeah. to detect the card, and so the BIOS includes it in its realm of things. You're responding to something from Q1 Fiend, and I don't see anything. Oh, unless it's up here. Okay, uh, there it is. Yeah, yeah no, he was, he was saying he was settling and asking what to, and he said he was going to get a beverage. Oh, yes, yes, there you go, there you go. <laughs> Toss is in the house. He says, uh, most fun project is meeting new Linux victims, um, which are, they hang out in his trunk, you know, the, in the caddy trunk. And, and, and Toss can do the therapy let, for let me. Let me show you the computer I got in my trunk, man. <laughs> you got some new bot do for you. That's right. We got some new up on too. Upcoming project to get the rest of the hardware ordered the day after work. I'll be upgrading my NAS. Ooh, thinking about Zentium service. Let's go ahead and talk about that real quick because that's actually the first thing that I have on my list of fun little, uh, fun little projects is um, my office now has its own little centralized NAS. Now I'm using Open Media Vault, so if you are looking at a good NAS, 
Um, Open Media Vault is a good Debian based Media Vault. So I've slightly customized mine in that mine also runs an ebook server. So if you're anywhere on my network, you can actually log right on into uh, either phone, browser, whatever else, and um, go right into my ebook server and download any ebooks that I have on my server as well, uh, which is really a, a sweet tool. And I have a way that if I drop it into a certain shared folder on my NAS, it will automatically, every 10 minutes, it runs a cron job, finds all those books, adds them to the server, and then um, um, deletes them from that uh, temporary storage area. But Open Media Vault itself, um, I did a video where I show how to how to build this. And I, what I did is I used one of those uh, micro PC towers. And I took out the DVD drive and I put two uh, laptop hard drives inside of it and put them in together. Is it a RAID 0 or RAID 1? Basically, they're a mirror of each other. I forget which one it is. Um, I always say it wrong. So it's basically two hard drives that are a mirror of each other and then that is it has an open share that is just an anonymous file sharing through the whole office i have a network share which you have to have access and then i have uh, video i have music i have sermons i have backups um, and a variety of other things on there and uh, open media vault is just epically awesome definitely worth checking out if you're looking for a good nas server so that's kind of my first fun project. Ben, how's it going there? Not too bad. Yourself? Not too bad. Not too bad. What well, kind of fun projects you got going? <clears throat> um, it's fu funny you were mentioning Open Media Vault. I'm contemplating moving my free NAS box uh, from a dual core seller on to an i7. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's BSD, <laughs> not Linux, but it's close <laughs> enough. Yep. Very cool. Yeah, the way mine set up is I could pr easily port it because the entire operating system is on a thumb drive. <laughs> so... Yeah, th that's the way I have FreeNAS set up. Yep. And I'm not, I'm not even using an, I'm not using uh, an L2 Arc, so it's just the, the two mirror drives and the boot drive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that RAID 1 or RAID 0? I forget. That's RAID 1. RAID 1. Okay. There you go. Cool. So, yeah, and that's, that's a fun project. So uh, Linux Dabbler is looking at that as well. Um, if you're looking for a more automated type system, Open Media Vault's good. Linux Dabbler or uh, FreeNAS. The reason I went with Open Media Vault, it's Debian based rather than um, BSD. Um, I was after the file system more than the. Uh, I was more familiar with the Linux. I looked at Open Media Vault, but um, I really sort of fell in love with how ZFS was put together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I hear it's, it might actually be better than Open Media Vault. I just know if the v Media Vault goes down, I know how to work on the Debian server more than I know how to work on the BSD. Yeah. So, um, top sirloin is great in homemade mac and cheese. Steve Anderson, what is this, Toss's channel? We're on to food now? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Ricky asks, how did you get into computers? You guys want to take that and I'll take it last. Ben, how'd you get into computers? Uh, my dad always had one in the house. Uh, the very first one I remember, I think was an IBM XT clone. Mm, I think okay. it was a leading edge. Hmm. I think that was an 8088. If I'm correct, someone in chat will probably know. And, uh, always had one near me at all times. And now I've got a whole room full of them. Very good. Dan, how'd you get into computers? Oh, that's a ancient story. <laughs> <laughs> um, Back in my day. <laughs> yeah. It, it turned out that I worked out in a garage um, way out in the middle of nowhere where we fixed just about anything. And this guy come in one day and he had a shop in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And I'd always been interested in electronics since I was a little boy. Okay. So I, um, he, he started bringing his Granada in for us to um, work on it and keep it running for him. And then one day he asked me, would I like to go see his shop? So I went out to this pole barn way out in the middle of nowhere where this guy actually had a disguised laboratory full of all kinds of stuff. And at that time, they were just fitting um, the place with brand new IBM clone computers that ran on DOS. So he asked me, um, how would you like to get out of the grease monkey business and come work for me? I'm like, 
it sounds like a good plan for for me for now because I was like maybe 23, 24 years old. And I went to work for him for several years where he taught me all kinds of electronics tricks and things and how to do stuff. You got actually a better education from him than you could from really a college. Mm -hmm. um, and they got these uh, computers and that's how I got started with computers and DOS. And my job was actually to t uh, take something that was just all kludged together with wires on, on, on the workbench draw a, a schematic on paper, put the schematic in the computer with a program called EE Designer. And this thing, I'll tell you, you'd add three or four parts. And in order to get a redraw, you'd hit the key on the keyboard to redraw the whole print. I mean, you could have went out and ate lunch and came back. <laughs> but um, when it was done, they had what was called pen plotters. And the paper that went in these things was really huge. I believe they had size C and size D size paper that was kind of almost a, the D size was the size of a regular blueprint they used back then for drafting. Mm -hmm. And you put this thing in and you, this pen plotter had four different color pens that went in it. And it would sit there in an, in an hour or two and draw everything you put in the computer so somebody could read it. Nice. But um, that was how I got started with computers. And for then, then on out, it just became a hobby for me. And it's like, man, I got to have one of these things. It's, it's, it's a toy. It does things. Uh, it's the future. And I just moved up the food chain with the computers. But um, uh, out of all that stuff with the drawing the wiring schematics, another thing was is I had to use the same software package to design circuit boards. Mm -hmm. And they would create what was called a Gerber file. And you took this Gerber file to a circuit board vendor uh, uh, and give them this file. And the file contained all the whole sizes for the for the parts and everything and the size of the board and all the foils that went on it and everything else. And they would generate you a couple of test boards from this file. You never bought more than a couple of test ones to begin with because not everything was on them the first run. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Uh, Vince, how'd you get into computers? Uh, I think as a, as a kid, I was, I was always very, very nerdy, very geeky. I just had this fascination with technology um, so I, 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 actually, I was the one that actually badgered my parents to get us a, a, our first computer, which from memory was a 386SX uh, machine. I can't remember how much RAM it had. I can't remember how, what the hard disk was. Uh, but we weren't, we weren't that well off, so uh, I think we, we had to make some sacrifices to, to get it. Uh, but it was great. I, I just was tinkering with it so much. I think it was DOS 5 it came with. Uh, and then Windows 3.0, 3.11, uh, moved up through the ranks to, uh, I think, Windows 2000, uh, and all the way to where I am today. Uh, one thing I would say with all the machines that I've had was that um, I always would max every, all the hardware out before I eventually got a new machine. So I would stick as many drives as I could fit in it. I, could, <laughs> I would max out whatever RAM it, it would take. Uh, I've done some CPU replacements uh, as well, uh, just because I don't know. It's part of me. I just hate throwing stuff out. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, I was actually probably the, about the opposite of everybody. I just didn't want really anything to do with technology. I actually just thought it dumbed people down, and I still do, um, if you're not careful with it. But in high school, I actually I did the. Uh, took chemistry and I was the only one that didn't even touch a calculator. I still managed to get the highest score in the class by doing all the math on the margins of the paper and really impressed the chemistry teacher. Then I was like in my senior year, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go to college and I bet computers are the wave of the future. And so I said, well, let's go ahead and get computers. And I don't do anything. Uh, I don't do anything part way. If you know me, <laughs> I don't do anything part way. And so if I'm going to spend a couple thousand dollars on a computer, I'm going to know how this thing works inside and out and upside and down. 
And so I spent two thousand dollars, got my first computer. This thing was a this thing was the envy of the block, man. I had a it had a one hundred megahertz processor, Pentium five, thirty two rip roaring megabytes of RAM in that thing. Whew, I had a twelve X CD ROM, buddy. Windows wow. ninety five. I had a hard drive. Those guys that sold me that computer, he said, This hard drive is so big you will never fill it up. <laughs> one point one point six gig hard drive, which admittedly was very big in, in Windows ninety five days. But I still have the hard drive. It still works. It's a great hard drive, you know. <laughs> but uh you know, and I got that and I was like, I'm gonna figure out how to use this thing. So I learned how to how to get it, I learned how to reinstall it, I learned how to do drivers, and I learned how to take it apart, put it back together, because I don't do anything, you know, uh halfway. And so with that, I just became, you know, had an aptitude for technology. So you know, just went ahead and did what I could do and tinker around with laptops, tinker around with operating systems and all sorts of things like that. So that's how I got into it. This is a parallel port drive, a Maxter drive from the Windows XP days. Nice. It's 320 gigabytes, and I have an adapter on my desk that plugs into the USB port, yeah. so I actually can still use these things. Yeah, I have one of those. Well, so. well, you know what? This thing cost, I bet, like $350 when I bought it. <laughs> At what, they weren't cheap back then to get into yeah. the huge gigabyte scale. Yeah, I think all the ones I have that are IDEs are like 10 gig range. Something Here's like a good one for you guys. This is a five and a half inch. Just for scale, here's a here's a modern three and a half, right? For for the <laughs> people that don't remember. My goodness. One point two gigabytes. <laughs> What's it and going? Thing, uh, th it just it's a parallel ID, just normal IDE. It's got the master slave jumper. It's uh, date of manufacture. I mean, even the XT clones didn't have those. Oh no, I, th there were a whole bunch of Acers and Compacts that had these. Then it must this have branded. It must this be one's branded Compact. Branded stuff that I am not familiar with. You know, I, I've encountered a few of these, but I kept this one just because it amused me. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't seen that. anything like that. The clones, the popular ones, were the Packard Bell ones. Remember the Packard Bell brand? Yep. Yeah, years ago, we, we rented one of those from a renta center. Ooh. <laughs> nice. Quint, Has anyone Quint ever is pulled watching. a hydrogen he can't, he oh, can't, yeah. uh, he can't join, but Quint is watching, guys. So we all got to say, Quint, we're, you're missing it, man. You're missing it, Quint. Yeah, no, I, I told him that we weren't talking about him earlier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Quint, you know, Vince, you're, you're not on here living the dream. <laughs> That's all right, man. That's a cool, yeah, man. No, we'll, I, we'll see you next week. I just um, mentioned, has anyone, pulled, has anyone pulled apart a hard drive? Yes. Do it once. Yeah, I think everyone should do it once. It's it's crazy cool. Uh, yeah, with got, an old one. I mean, I got I got a whole bunch of magnets down here. Yeah, those magnets. I was going to mention those magnets. They they're super powerful. You got to be very careful with them. Yeah, I uh, actually don't um, get your finger caught. For my uh, old home cooking hacks channel, the way I had the upward camera, I actually have those mounted on a hard drive magnets in various places in the kitchen. It's kind of exciting. Those uh, things are really powerful. Those magnets. I have some magnets out in the garage that came out of a General Electric power steering electric motor, 24 volts, approximately 70 horsepower. These magnets replace the fields in the motor, and they are so strong that they will drag a shovel across the garage floor. <laughs> nice. Wow. Are, are they ceramic or are they like co uh, rare earth earth cobalt? They're cobalt. Okay. Yeah. And they're they're half moon shaped about they're about twelve inches across from edge to edge and they're half moon shaped and you got on one side of the motor the north side and the south side and your armature goes through the center. Yep, the two stators. Yeah. Yeah. Stators? yeah. Uh rotor. Yeah. The rotor. Uh the, the the stator or the fields, the windings are replaced by these magnets. So they no longer need they use the windings in them. And the only way I could get them out of the motor to have them to play with is to heat the case of the motor up with a torch, stick a, a four by four, a couple of them down the middle of the motor, and then smack the case with a hammer and it bust the glue loose. 
<laughs> and these things would naturally want to slam into each other from right across from each other. And those so are brittle. Block too. of wood in the middle of them. T Toss is now called the Godfather, guys. If you're feeding the comment threads, so, the Godfather. How's it going there, Tux Digital? Michael's online, guys. All right. Uh, let's see. Steve, how's it going there, Steve? Just trying to get on there. Anna Rita jumped in. How's it going there, Anna Rita? Um, Spider Man. Okay. Apparently, Linux users have magnetic personalities. Ha ha ha. Nice. All right. Uh, second. Yeah, we second Oh, we right. stick to our distros. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. The uh, second project I wanted to mention uh, that has brought a lot of fun to my life is uh, Open Source Media Center. Of course, there's also Open Elec and uh, is it Libre Elec, I think is another one. Yeah. Um, I'll do the same thing. So these are uh, these are customized distros that just do one thing really well, and that is convert a Raspberry Pi or a computer into a Kodi box. And so... I actually have one of these. My little Raspberry Pi sits on the back of my dumb TV and plugs in, and it can access all of my network shares. It can access uh, videos on YouTube. It can access just a bunch of different things. And actually, any phone that you have connected to it that you have the um, Kodi app on, uh, I can plug in a video and then just send it right to the Kodi app and send it right to the TV. So better than a Chromecast, you know? Um, but Open Source Media Center is the one that I'm using. Converts the Raspberry Pi into just a really amazing device for watching movies, listening to music. Um, I also do uh, Top Doc films and other things on that system as well. Uh, so that's uh, one of the projects that uh, I like using uh, Linux for. Do you guys use these ones are similar to them? When you say the Kodi app, do you mean the, the Core app? Well, the, on the phone, the the controller is is core yeah, uh, yeah, for core, the Android yeah. app. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the application is Cody. You see what I'm talking about? So yeah, if, you were to, yeah. if you were to download the app on the phone, it's actually called core. Um, but yeah, I've used it as a remote control. I've used it as a remote control. I didn't know you could actually send stuff to your Kodi box. Yeah, um, what it, what it's going to do is it's going to, on the web browser, so you just go into your web browser, look up a video, and then pull down uh, pull down your uh, your hamburger menu, and one of the options is going to be send to Kodi. Oh, I can get rid of my a Chromecast now. Yeah, well, as, as long as it's you're using the Chromecast just to do Kodi, or just to do YouTube over to the TV. Yes. Yeah, yeah Kodi will take care of that for you. Yep. Getting rid of it. I have really not ventured into anything like that. Open Source Media Center and OpenELEC are both great. OpenELEC is not even worth the letters to type on. Yeah, I ran OpenELEC once, and it was it, it ran okay for my case, um, but I definitely prefer Open Source Media Center, and I have not experimented with Libre. Um, I used yeah. LibreELEC a little bit on a uh, on a Raspberry Pi, and it was it worked fine, but the YouTube performance was kind of awful. Yeah. What uh, Tux uh, Digital, if you're still there, Michael, what's uh, bad about Open Elec? Um, yeah, anyway, you were saying it was worked well for you? Oh, yeah. The, like local video playback off the NAS was fine, but mm -hmm. uh, YouTube playback was kind of dreadful. Okay. Uh, so uh, my, uh, my two media centers are really just Lubuntu. And when I want to run Kodi, I run Kodi and everything else runs in a browser. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I don't. I'm trying to remember if I tried running YouTube on Open Elec. I'm not sure. I did or did I don't remember. I, I know... keep getting like weird errors, like limits were reached, and uh, I, I never was able to get to the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I ran into one hiccup where some plugins got up uh, updated on Open Source Media Center and didn't stop working until I ran a plugin, but. There was one case, I think it was about a year or so ago, there was an update in Open Source Media Center that basically made it so video would not play. It'd play for like 10 seconds and it'd just kind of stop and get all bad. Um, and then uh, I don't know what the situation was, so I rolled back to a previous version. So I ran an older version for a while and I was forced to update everything to fix the plugin issues and everything does work perfect again. So, so I'll have to try that again. 
Yeah, Libre releases updates the day the new Cody gets releases. Okay. Always behind updates on Cody. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's why. So it takes a year. I'm not all that concerned about that as much, um, but I can yeah, certainly see the point. Open Electo taking a whole year. That could be problematic. Um, yeah. Like I said, open source. Love that one. Uh, okay. Is it right to falsely copyright strike a video that is giving out your name and school? Um, no, what you do is you contact YouTube support and you tell them that they are trying to dox you and they will take that very seriously. So if somebody is giving out your name and your school and stuff about you, then if they don't, if they don't take it down, then sit forward that abuse, flag it. When you go to flag a video on YouTube, there will be a timestamp. What you do is you show them the timestamp and you write, this is actually doxing me or somebody and they should deal with that pretty quickly. And then you can follow up with a support um, link to them and follow up with them. That's what I would do, Pizza, if someone's doing that to you. Um, or call the police on them. One of the two. <laughs> <laughs> They'll handle it very quickly, too, <laughs> depending on the situation, you know, um, if they're doing it just to be a troll. Like I, I had a I had a bad troll on my uh, one of my videos last night. I, I actually flagged him for abuse about three dozen times. And then uh, I sent his username over to my YouTube partner at YouTube and I haven't seen anything from him since. I'm not sure his channel's still around. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> All right, any other fun projects you guys want to chat about? I haven't been really doing anything interesting lately. Like I said, I've been kind of limping around for a while. <laughs> yeah, that describes my week as well. We had massive... Uh... Yeah, toss, toss is covering your back there, pizza. Toss will take care of it. Yeah, we'll man, fatty pizza. trunk, man. It's wide open. <laughs> it's good to have friends in high places. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Friends in, friends, in, friends in really high places. Or very low places. Or, yeah, there you go. There you go. All right. Uh, so I have Cody on my tablet. I can stream the video to the dumb TV without the need of Chromecast. Uh, no, Anna Rita, you need to have you need to have a Cody box on your TV. So a Raspberry Pi running Open Source Media Center or um, uh, Libre Elect. Uh, get that put onto your TV, and then that will turn itself turn your dumb TV into a Linux powered smart TV, and then you can use that instead of the Chromecast. Well, now, I don't know what anybody... else the Chromecast does, though. Vince, what else, what else does the Chromecast do? What does it send? Uh, it's really just uh, pushing videos. Uh, you can put, or you can also push uh, photos if you want. But it's just, it's really just for pushing videos onto your, mm. your TV. Not sure. So that that reminds photos, me. But I don't know. Yeah, you got There's an app. There's a. I think there's a Chrome app you can get, uh, where you open up the, your browser and then open up your files on your browser and push it to the Chromecast. Yeah, that, that reminds me. Did anybody see that? Um, I think it was Samsung was putting antivirus on their TVs now. <laughs> antivirus. Which, in the yeah, TV. which which the article I read said that is a complete waste of time. <laughs> well, you know what? I my smart TV is probably six or seven, maybe six years old. And as time went on, the apps and the TV just started to die. Mm -hmm. um, the the um, Netflix just started skipping and causing problems and freezing and not working properly. And then I had problems with the Hulu. The Hulu would work on the Blu-ray player, but wouldn't work on the TV. And then finally the Blu-ray player quit working. And so I wound up having to go out and get a, what's a Roku box. And the Roku box, at least that's kept up to date. And I got all my stuff back, but now I don't even watch the TV anymore. <laughs> so you know, I'm I, I I'm in the process of canceling half of it. Yeah. Well, that's a feature, Dad. The uh, the breaking apps. You got to you got to buy a new TV. 
Yeah. 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 It's a feature. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And the cool thing is, like, when my stuff started to break a little bit on the box, it's just like, oh, time to push the updates. I wait until the thing stops to work before I push the updates, you know. If the thing was on 24-7 or was accessible, you know, from the internet, it'd be a different story, but... Um, well, you know, um, I've been a Netflix customer for an extremely long time. I used to be part of, the, well, I still am part of their disc in the mail type uh, program they had. And it was really cool because you could sign up to have three discs in your possession at any given time. And you sent them in the mail and within two days, you would get another disc or another two discs or whatever you sent back, which kept a lot of movies around to watch but as time went by we started moving more towards streaming and i chiseled that program down instead of three discs in my possession is one disc in my position and now i don't even know what to put in my queue anymore because the movies are so bad You know, at the exceptional Transformers movie or the exceptional Mission Impossible movie or something like that, most of the movies are old movies with chunks cut out of them, all rearranged with other movies and glued back together. <laughs> Fun. It's like VidAngel, right? <laughs> wait, you know, wait until you get to my age. You'll see this pattern that's developing in the movies. Mm. Oh, yeah. It, it was, you know where they're reusing stuff and taking scenes from other movies and putting them in new movies. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, Anna Rita, I am on feel old. Oh, yeah. Anna Rita, I am on chapter six on the audiobook production. I found out why it's taking me so long because that book is like two or three times longer than the other ones. It's coming very slowly, but it's coming along. Um, Max asks a great question. Can you explain the difference between the pros and cons on KDE slash GNOME distros? And what distros do you recommend for new users? Anyone want to tackle this one? I think GNOME is better for new users hmm. in a certain yeah. sense. I, I wouldn't recommend either for new users, honestly. KDE yeah. is, has enough options to drive a man mad. I understand that, and that's why I would not, may not recommend KDE for a new user. But man, GNOME is just like, how do I do anything on this? Okay, uh, then you, it's, it's something <laughs> a little less GNOME, uh, you know, Mate or you know, yeah. XF, no, well, um, all the, you know, something GTK based. GTK based. I mean, I think I think uh, Budgie and Cinnamon are like perfect for new users. Um, they're un familiar enough, but unique enough. They have a lot of the functionality. They they have some settings, but not overwhelming you. I think that those are the best desktop environments. Um, would be Cinnamon or Budgie, probably. Uh, Mateus well, does, if, does have if, a if lot you, of you, configurations too. If you look at it like this, and if you look at GNOME for what it is, GNOME like mostly mirrors how phones and tablets work. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So. If somebody knows how to use a phone or an iPad or something like that, they might they might like the GNOME. The KDE, I just, I don't know. It's a little too overwhelming for me. It's too much tinkering. Hmm. But uh, I don't like GNOME either, but I'm just thinking, you know, if I can use my phone, I can at least use GNOME, even though I don't like it. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, so your ultimate thing, Max, that... The, the the weirdness that you get with those two desktop environments, we're looking at desktop environments, not the distros, is that GNOME has virtually no options and KDE has so many options you will get overwhelmed. So finding something in between is the best bet if you're just kind of learning. And then the distros, I mean, there's Debian, there's Manjaro, there's Arch, there's... You know, I wouldn't do Arch for a new user. I'd pick something like, you know, Ubuntu Mate is good. I use Linux Mint Cinnamon as my preferred. Um, Solace is great with the budgie, um, things like that. So, and Dan, you're on Ubuntu Mate, right? Yes. Uh, okay. XFCE is not a bad choice either, as long mm -hmm. as you don't get a distro that's just got it overloaded with stuff that you don't need. Uh huh. Like Peppermint would be a great choice if you knew what additional software you wanted to put into it mm -hmm. 
But uh, uh, I, yeah, the mint I actually or the mate I actually got it set up so it looks very much like cinnamon. Show respect. Study the Godfather movies. Yeah, Toss, we, we need you we need you to make a call in there on the family. We need some backup for pizza. Yeah. <laughs> and in fact, uh pizza, if you um if you uh get that to me, pizza, when we go off live here, um I'll have I think would you guys all be willing to flag this for pizza so it gets looked at pretty quick? Yeah, it's sure. the link pizza. Yep. Yeah, when when pizza when uh when it goes when we take the stream off line today pizza shoot me the message we'll find that video and we'll all flag it for you too um let's see uh let's see get money ready for the audiobook yeah it should be hopefully so let's see so i i'm over halfway through and now it's each chapter now is taking about 20 25 minutes final production that means it's about three hours per chapter so I have about 10 more hours before I finish that audiobook. And then it'll <laughs> it'll be out in about probably one week where you're buying it, Anna Rita. Probably one week when from when that's out, it should be ready. Um so give it a few more weeks. Yeah, don't rush it. Uh make I mean, make your it's, first run your best run. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Kubuntu makes defaults not need to change that much, like regular plasmas. Okay. Um, yeah, the default in Kubuntu is double click, as mm -hmm. opposed to single click, which is yeah. kind of nice. But it's still just one more setting. Which, I mean, three of my systems run KDE as a desktop, so I can't hate on it too hard. <laughs> but I kind of like the, <laughs> you know, the uh, getting it all set up. Steve's very own stopped at a gas station and they had a sign that read a Bitcoin ATM. Uh, okay. Oh, yes. In large cities, there you will find some Bitcoin usage. In New York City, they mm -hmm. coffee shops take Bitcoins for coffee. Hmm. They even have well, a Bitcoin I mean, I, exchange. I, I guess if I can go into a cafe and a college and pay with my data, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I think right around from on Wall Street, there's a Bitcoin exchange now too. Wait, wait, wait. So what do you get? From, what do you actually get out of the ATM? Do you get a a val What is it? I don't know. <laughs> what, what is it? Is it a, is it a coin? It's got to be cash, right? You're... It's it's a little those bitcoins. Oh, oh I see. I see. <laughs> I see. So you're converting your bitcoins to cash. I get it. I thought, I thought you were getting Bitcoins out of the machine. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, think if you have a Bitcoin app on your phone, like a, a Bitcoin wallet, you somehow sync it with the machine, and then you can get cash for your Bitcoin from your Bitcoin wallet. Hmm, okay. That's my best guess. Hmm. Okay. I guess so. Uh, but that, I that, tried that to get into like Bitcoin. I tried to get into bitcoins when the price was so darn high on them, and um, I tried two exchanges, and none of them would process my request, so I gave up. Yeah, I think it's lucky that you did. Well, they, the thing was is they were so overwhelmed from the activity of the bitcoins going up in price so fast. People were just you know putting requests in after request. And they just sent me an email. We are too overwhelmed right now to fulfill your request. Oh, joy. I'd like my money now, please. <laughs> That's my first thought is if I'm having trouble putting money in it, how much trouble am I going to have getting it back out? Yeah, yeah. That's that's a concern. That's a big concern. All right, I have one. Have these... Yeah, I have one more I want to talk about, and of course... What stream about Linux, fun Linux projects would be complete without talking about the fun RetroPie? <laughs> you know, so RetroPie, well, uh, yeah, RetroPie is a Linux distribution. Now, I'm, can you run it on other things other than Pies? I run it on Pi, of course. There's an x86 build. Uh, okay, there is. Okay. I so, thought. Um, I don't know. I run it on, on my Pi, and of course, um, I use uh, the Logitech. Is it F? What is it? F5? Whatever that controller is, the popular uh, Logitech controller, 
uh, which plugs into it perfectly. Of course, any uh, ROMs that you have, you can use, and the thing has, uh, you know, like 50 different operating systems in it. Um, very nice platform. It does have Kodi built in. We were talking about Kodi earlier, so you can watch uh, video with it as well. A uh, really neat platform, really neat system to turn your Raspberry Pi into a little mini gaming machine. Uh, you can even buy little cases that will resemble the old machine that you like the most, right? <laughs> but I just well, that's what I did. One. Did you? Nice. I uh, I had a family member want a little tiny Super Nintendo, mm -hmm. and so instead of uh, she wanted to go buy the little Super Nintendo mini thing, I said, no, 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 just wait for Christmas, yeah, and. I, I stuffed a pie in one of those cases, and she's happy with it. Nice, very nice. Yeah, that's. Uh, but yeah, Retro Pie is fun. I uh, I like some of the old classic games I grew up on on there, and you know. It has uh, the Samba shares already set up. The which ones? The, the Samba shares are set up by default. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you just have to drop the ROMs into the uh, the name of the system you're trying to use it on. Yep. And they show yep. up in the in the browser. Yep that'll work and uh yeah it's i love it it's a nice system i don't talk about it much i don't generally won't talk about it much more because there's a lot of potential for uh legally abusing it in this country mm -hmm. um but it's definitely an option depending on where you are in the world and things like that so i heard that um, nintendo are cracking down a lot on all the websites where you can get the roms from mm -hmm. yeah yeah That's... they're very they're very active in, they're very active in cracking down on that stuff yeah nintendo is nintendo is is become a slimy company to me you know you won't even well, let are somebody we talking about the raspberry pies are we talking about the raspberry pies and then the, the nintendo box and with all the nintendo games in them mm -hmm. no because yeah, my cousin got my cousin got one for christmas it was a sealed product you know from nintendo i think yep yep yeah, and those a, are funny because the, those those ones there, while they're making a big deal about people illegally distributing their bad quality ROMs, somebody got one of those things, opened it up, and it has all the ROMs you just downloaded from. They didn't use their own code. They downloaded everyone else's ROMs and used them. Well, no, Tom, weren't they using uh, some of the uh, open source emulators too? Yeah, they were using the the emulators and the ROMs that were available online to make that device, which makes sense because those worked really well. They really did. Yeah, um, and there was there are large homebrew communities for all of those systems too. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Wow. So, and then of course you know there's there's of course the always legal applications of those as well. They got you know the the ability to play DOS games on it. So if you have old DOS games. Uh, there's a DOS emulator on there as well, so you can run, you know, run your old DOS games. In fact, I believe Doom comes preloaded on it, um, and there's other ones that you can get as well. So that's yeah, kind of kind of fun stuff. Yeah. Really, uh, really cool. So RetroPie definitely rocks. That's uh, one of the better things. I got to get back in and get some more RetroPie going. So, all right. And if you use a Pi 3, you can, uh, since it has the Bluetooth uh, receiver on board, you can use an Xbox 360 controller. Oh, can you? Yeah. Now, what ha now could I use an Xbox 360 controller if I just plug in a, a Bluetooth to it, do you think? Would yeah. I hmm, that'd be neat to try. I think so. That's how I, I was using one of those on a PC. Hmm, cool. Yeah, I in have fact, one, in Steam, I, it I sort of expects you to use a, In Steam, it sort of expects you to use a 360 controller in a lot of games. Really? Yeah, I have two. I have a Sony and I have a Logitech controllers, and they both work pretty well. So I just stick with those. And PS3 controllers, and I had a I had the Wii Mote working um, in Steam with a special driver and a bunch of other stuff. It was kind of a pain, but it did work. Mm -hmm. So pretty much any any of the normal ish game controllers you can make work. Yeah, I know that uh, sometimes you got to get in there and do some weird controller configurations and things so um that's what that's what i've done to mine and i have them set up the way i like and it's fun to be able to go on there and do some fun things oh Yu-Gi-Oh can beat super mario brothers under 15 minutes nice without the warp whistles yeah <laughs> with or without now which which super mario brothers are you talking about because i'm for the generation we like super mario brothers means one Part one, because, you know, well, we had that was like the amazing yeah. game when I was a kid, <laughs> you know. 
Frogger and Pac-Man are too old for NES. Yeah, well, I, you know, you can get those. And those, I think, are, are like, legal to download in the United States. Like, some of them are. Uh, some of the Atari ones are. At least there's free open source versions of some of them, too. So, PS4 controllers work well in Steam, Michael says. All right, yep. let's go ahead and do a final wrap-up, and then we'll kind of hang out uh, off the stream as well. So, uh, Ben, final words. Well, you, you, you got to keep busy with, if you've got a bunch of toys to play with, you got to find something to do with them, even if you don't have anything on hand to do. Mm -hmm. um, or just go out and, you know, go to a flea market. Find, so, find something to, uh, to inspire you to dig into a corner of it that you've never done. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, Dan. Final words. Final words is is um, if you ever get bored, there's lots of Linux distros out there to test, and they're <laughs> coming out all the time. But um, if I wanted to, I have some extra hardware around here I could play with. I just haven't been in the right uh, condition to actually play with it. Mm -hmm. um, right, well, I actually have some old computers i gotta send down to, to the recycling center and get rid of them because they're just old windows xp computers that nobody wants yeah well get get well but, soon Vince. other than that oh. yep yeah, go ahead go ahead that go ahead and finish up dan oh i'm done oh, okay good Vince. <laughs> uh i think everyone should remember with all the the debate and controversy that sometimes goes on that computers is, is fun have fun with it um linux is fun um linux is great because you can just really you can just because it's so easy to install uh you can just easily blow away a dish drive it doesn't work uh it's just so great so have fun with it oh kitty showed up for some kitty treats all right let's see oh boy kitty oh boy kitty Go to, go to full screen for the kitty treats. The feeding of the kitty. All right, so I'll be doing another stream on the Christian channel this evening. So you guys can check that out. That is at Our Walk in Christ on YouTube. Uh, 9 o'clock, that is one hour from now. And we'll be talking about a new Barna poll that came out. Uh, looking at uh, non-believers want to talk about faith but believers don't know how to do it or something silly like that i don't know we're gonna talk about what that stuff really all means um so that's gonna be that channel there and let me go ahead and grab you guys the link for the video and then if you guys are interested in the christian type stuff you can go on over there and let me find the link for that uh, copy link address and paste link address all right, and so we got that. We got the kitty fed, and I think we will go ahead and um, jump off now. So thanks for coming along, guys, and I hope that you enjoy fun projects on Linux and kitties. <laughs>